Hello guys and welcome back to another geography lesson. Today we're going to look at map work and what we're going to look at, we're going to revise an old question paper and the paper that we're going to have a look at is the poll paper and it was the final examination of 2011. Now I want you to pay attention to the type of questions that's being asked and what you need to go and look out for once you receive your autophoto and your topographical map. Let's begin with this question paper. Now the first question is all Usually it's always your multiple choice. Now you need to correct, the, the, you need to choose the correct answer and the multiple choice can be from the topographical map or the autophoto map. Now the first question, the index of the map sheet directly southeast of Pole is. Now before I'm going to continue, it's map code. So you need to find out what is the map code southeast of Pole. Now let's just quickly have a look where do we find this information. You can see over there on the top of your map, there's a map code 3318DB. Now, what does this stand for? The 33 stands for latitude, the 18 longitude, D for big block, B for small block. Now, they want to know what's the map code southeast of Pole. Now, like I've mentioned before, let's just go and construct our grid of pole. So first of all we know it's 33 degrees latitude, 18 degrees longitude. It's in big block D, A, B, C, D and small block B. So we know that Paul is situated right over there. Now the question states, provide the map code southeast. There is north, because keep in mind, this whole topographical map fits into small block D. There's east, there's south, there's west. So it's going to be that block over there. What happens now? The latitude stays the same, but our longitudinal position is going to change. So we're going to continue over there. So the longitude is going to change to 19. Quickly divide it up. It's A, B, C, D. And the new map code is going to be 33. That's where I got it from. Just going to use a different color pen. It's 33 because it's still based on the 33 latitude. 19. Okay. Big block C, A, B, C, small block C. So what's our answer going to be? It's going to be 33, 19, C, C. That's going to be the map code southeast of Pole. In grade 10 and 11, we looked at the different types of map projections and the Earth's curved surface represented on the topographical map by the Gauss conform projection. That's just a revision question that you've learned in grade 10 and 11. Now, Paul is located in the Western Cape, Northern Cape, Eastern Cape of Free State. Now, some of you have never traveled down to Paul or to the province where Paul is situated, but an easy way to determine it, if you go to your map, usually on the outside of your map, you will find information of the nearest city or town. Now as you can see Cape Town is 57 kilometers away and there's a small town known as French Hook 25 kilometers away and you should know as a grade 12 student that the capital of the Western Cape is Cape Town. So what province will Paul be if it's 57 kilometers away from Cape Town? It's going to be the Western Cape province. If we quickly look at question 1.4, the stream channel feature in block D12 on the topographical map is in, let's go and quickly have a look at the stream channel in D12. Okay, there's D. There's, oops. D12, if you look at the stream channel and this grit situated over there, 
and we can definitely see if you look at the stream channel in D12, it's a meandering stream. Even a braided stream as the stream continue. Have a look at it. This con as you can see, the river meanders over here where it starts. And if you follow the path of the Berg River, here it meanders again. And there you can see the stream braiding taking place, small islands of their position that develops. So the correct answer for question 1.4 can actually be two letters. It can be C and it can be B because we see the Berg River is turning into a braided stream and we can clearly see how the river is meandering. If you look at our next question, the man-made feature at 33 degrees, 38 minutes, 24 seconds south and 18 degrees, 52 minutes, 48 seconds east. Now let's quickly have a look. Let's go and find it on the map and provide you with the correct its coordinates. So if we quickly look on the map, they tell us the coordinates is 33 degrees. There's the latitude coordinates, 33 degrees, 38. So we know it's definitely going to be between 38 and 59 and 24 seconds south. So it's going to be roughly there somewhere. But let's quickly go and have a look at our longitudinal position. It's 18 degrees, 52 minutes, 51, 52. So it's over there. And the correct man-made feature that's found over there is the windmill that you see right over there. So your correct answer will be D. If you look at the drainage pattern in block F8, G8 and H8, is it a trellis, dentric, rectangular, radial? Let's quickly go and have a look at F8, G8. If you look at F8, G8. There's F, G and H. If you look at the drainage pattern over there, now definitely look at it. It's a shape resembles of the branches of a tree. So the correct answer will be B. It's a dendritic shape because it resembles the branches of a tree. The land use zone marked one on the autophoto. Let's quickly go and go to the autophoto. Now remember what's an autophoto? It's got a bigger scale, one to 10,000, and it's actually a vertical aerial photograph. So let's quickly go and have a look at the land use zone at number one. Now, if you look at number one, situated over there. Now you can basically see settlement taking place. Over there is the industries. So one will definitely be just on the outskirts of the suburban area. As you can see, there's not much infrastructure situated over there. So it looks to me like the rural urban French. Let's see if they give us the option in our multiple choice. The zone of DK is usually next to the CBD, the rural urban French. There you go, that's the correct area. The high income residential area can't be that. Why? Because we don't see any property stands or we've seen construction or infrastructure over there. And the industrial area is definitely not there. That's close to the Berg River. So the correct answer is B. The slope mark 2 on the autophoto map is, let's quickly go and have a look. Okay, there's the slope mark 2. Pay attention. Where the contour line says 200, the contour lines are very close to one another. And basically it decreases towards 
the right hand side. And that slope over there, I'm going to draw it now to you next to it. Let's quickly have a look what it resembles. So the contour lines were very close to one another and is decreasing. So it means it's extremely steep. It looks something like this if I had to go and draw it in a cross section. And that grid 12 is a concave slope. Okay. If we quickly look at 1.9, the building mark 3 on the autophoto map is a... Let's quickly have a look on the autophoto. Now, what you need to do when you get a question like this, you need to go and see where the demarcated area is on your topographical map, and you need to go and find the place that usually will have a reference. And three, if you look on your topographical map, will resemble a school. So your correct answer over there is A, will be a school. Now, coming back to our calculations, very importantly, once you need, you do, you need to do your calculations, you're going to need your calculator, you're going to need a ruler, and you're going to need a protractor. Now the calculations, We've done it a couple of times in the previous episodes. Keep in mind, they might change from map to map, but if most, most importantly, all the information that you need is on the map that's been given to you. Now, our first question is calculate the gradient between truth station 172 in block C8 and spot height 162 in block B9 show all calculations. Now first of all, when we look at gradient, it consists of a formula. Gradient equals height over distance. Now immediately, the gradient wanted to be calculated is on the topographical map. And we determine gradient, we calculate gradient in meters. So I'm just going to put in brackets over here, we need to multiply it with 500. Now let's just quickly have a look at a couple of things that we need to pay attention to, special attention. The trick station is 172. Now keep in mind, when we look at the trick station, the 172 doesn't represent the height. Now let's just quickly have a look where the gradient is, it's in block C8. As you can see, there is Trick Station 172. As you can see, it's printed in bold and in italic. This is a Trick Beacon number. It's not the actual height in meters. The height is 173.6. And then they provided us with the spot height in B9. Okay, let's just find B9. There's spot height 162, as you can see, situated right over there. So they asked to calculate the gradient from spot height 162 to trick station 172, but the height is there. Now, what do we need to do? We need to get the difference between it. And how do we get the difference? You just subtract the highest from the lowest. And to determine the distance, what do we need to do? You take a ruler and you measure the distance between the spot height and the trick station. Okay, so let's quickly go back. We got a height, it's 173.6. So our height of the trick station is 173.6, subtracting the spot height 162. So we measured the distance between the two areas. And how many centimeters did we get? We got 5,2 centimeters. And we know because we express gradient in meters and we measure altitude also in meters, we times it with 500. Now you get out your calculator 
0.6 subtracting 162 that equals 11,6. Now we times the distance, the measurement, 5,2 centimeters times 500 equals 2,600. Now we need to get a ratio of 1 because what do we need to determine? We want to see how far do we need to walk for the gradient to increase by a meter. And to get a ratio of 1, we divide the number by the same number. In this case, 11,7 divided by 11,6, 11, I beg your pardon, divided by 11,6. A simple rule of math, what you do on the top, you need to do on the bottom. So 11,6 divided by 11,6 equals 1. 2600 divided by 11,6 2600 divided by 11.6 that equals 224,1. So that means 224,1. So that means for every 224 meters we walk, the gradient is going to increase with one meter. Okay. Our next question is a cross section. The following is a cross section from the windmill and block E4 to the trick station 184. So basically what happened here, yeah, they actually constructed a cross section already for you. Now, before we're going to continue with the questions, we quickly need to take a short break. And after the break, we're going to continue with the questions regarding this cross-section right in front of us. See you in a bit.